So let's look at k-means, and we will actually see how, it can, how easily it converge on different local optima. We'll be looking at a small data set that just contains these eight points. And now when I'm doing k-means, I first have to randomly pick some starting points. We'll be looking at the basic algorithm. If I look at my total sum of squares of the data set, in this case it's 120. And that kind of serves as a reference how much we simplified and, and reduced the, the data set. So now I'm picking two points, and in this case I was unlucky. This is likely a bad starting condition. I picked two points in like the same cluster because intuitively this should be one cluster in here. So these are actually pretty bad starting conditions. And by the Voronoi argument, I know that my clusters will be split this way. So this will be my first cluster and this will be my second cluster in the first iteration. And then my cluster mean will move somewhere here and this one will move somewhere there. But of course, I don't do this by drawing some random lines there. I do this by computing. It's an algorithm, it doesn't draw. So I assign each point with the least squares um, deviation, and I have this sum of squares. So it's actually worse than my assigning everything to the global center assigning everything to this point because these edges are pretty long. But now I can update my centers. I have labeled points, now I can update my centers, and now I have these new centers and now the value has improved. I have kind of simplified, I have reduced the, the variance of my data set if I split it into two parts. And now I can reassign points again. And it's easy to see that this point will now be reassigned. It's not that obvious about this one. Well, I can look at what the Voronoi edge will be. And I know that this point is going to remain in the same cluster. But um, yeah, the algorithm just computes it. It's the standard algorithm. It brute forced us these computations. And we reassign all points, and we have to update our centers. So this center will now move somewhere here, and this will probably move somewhere here. And we've seen the sum of squared decreased. We are optimizing this. It must decrease. It cannot increase. Or we have a mistake in there. And I have new cluster centers, and I can do the same heuristic again, and we can see, okay, it's probably now converged. To verify this, we have to reassign all points, and we get the same labels. So the clustering has converged after three iterations or so with um, a sum of squares of 61.5. So let's restart. Let's do the same thing again. But this time, we get to pick these two points as initial centers. And that's probably a better choice. Let's see if we can find a better solution. So every point is assigned to the nearest center. I'm updating my cluster centers. I'm assigning every point to the same center, and it's already converged. Same assignment, same centers, that's it. And now we have actually a better solution. But is this the, the best one? Maybe there's another solution on this data set. It's a tiny data set, but why should there only be two local optima? There could be more. So we can actually try the same thing once more. And this time I'm picking these two points kind of like a farthest point type of heuristic. Let's see what happens. All the points are assigned to that top center. The one on the bottom remains unchanged. I'm updating my cluster centers, and it's easy to see 
that nothing will change. It converged. So while this was very fast, it converged to a worse solution. So even on this data set, we already have at least three local optima where the standard algorithm of k-means will not escape from. There's maybe one algorithm that might actually get out of some of them. And I can get quite some variations. So one was around the 60, one I think was 56, and one was 72. So the results can vary. But I can arguably choose the one with the lowest sum of squares, and on this data set, it will also be the best solution. The second observation, and now we are looking at the larger data set, will be that initially things change fast, and eventually the changes become tiny. So I'm using a data set that I like to call the Mickey Mouse data set because we have like the two ears and the head. Or we, we could add some nose in here and maybe some eyes, but um, that would make it even harder. It turns out that this is actually a pretty hard data set for quite some algorithms. It's nice if you do Gaussian modeling, but for other algorithms this is pretty tough because they are not very well separated. So we pick some random starting conditions. In this case, I think I'd use the random seed zero, but I was unlucky and I have two cluster centers nearby. Well, for educational purposes, I was lucky because it means it takes longer to converge. But uh, from the quality of the solution, this was, of course, a bad starting point. And I've been drawing the uh, Voronoi diagram, and now every point will be assigned to the nearest center. So that's the, the labels that we see, the colors. But now this center will have to move somewhere here, and this one will have to move somewhere here, of course, and this will probably move there. So I'm computing these arithmetic means. And if I would draw each step, there would easily be a mismatch. That the points, if the points are not relabeled, then they are not with the closest center and all of that, there's always something not matching in these pictures until you have converged, because otherwise it would, <laughs> would have converged. So in, usually when in the pictures that I'm showing right now, we have reassigned the points, but not yet updated the cluster center. So what is kind of not matching is the position of the center. So the cluster edges have kind of moved. So this one has moved over here, and this one probably moved a bit over here. And the cluster centers have moved a bit in, in the direction that I expected them to move. And we are in the next iteration. And now this one will probably move over here. And this one will move further down, because some of the points here were green, and they became blue new, now. So the center has to move down. At the same time, some of these points here they were blue before, now they are red. So that is also pushing away the blue center. And instead, the red one will, uh, this one will be moving further down here. And we do another iteration, and another iteration, and another iteration, and you can see that it moves towards what you would eventually expect as a reasonable solution on this data set. But in the last few slides, because I kind of turn off the swipe on, on the tablet, it's not that easy to see. But on these last iterations, only very little changed. There are only a few points close to this edge that change their label color. And it's quite easy to see that computing the distances of these points is a total waste of effort. But the standard algorithm, every iteration, it will compute the distance of these and these and these. But actually, none of these three distances matters. The point is going to remain assigned to the same cluster throughout the entire process. 
So the standard algorithm is quite wasting computational resources here. Okay, so there are some more iterations until it has converged. It converged after 14 iterations with these poor starting conditions. It's also notable that the result is actually not particularly nice. This is not what, uh, if you gave that to a kid and say, color this in three colors, it wouldn't have colored it this way. It would probably have co chosen colors for the ears and for the head. So this is not the resolution that we would want to have. But that's k-means. We chose the wrong tool. We opted for k-means. It was our choice. And k-means splits at that middle orthogonal line. And it puts cluster center somewhere and splits at the middle. And that is what we asked for. We didn't ask to it to find a split that is here. Because that split would have a larger sum of squared errors. So it would be worse in our objective function. So doing this type of split would be wrong <laughs> if this is our objective. And that's why we need to ask the right question. We need to decide whether we want sum of squares optimized. And on this data set, this is simply the wrong task. So we get a poor result. <laughs>